I think one thing that you can you can guarantee that you're gonna see next season from Sydney of Folter for Iowa is that you're going to see nonstop energy. And there's only a few people that work that that have the energy and have the effort, the grit, and then then a Sydney of Folter. I don't know why I can't talk, but um, what's going on, guys? It's RC, and so we're back with another video. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Sydney Fulter, um, the impact that she could have, the impact that she had last season, and she's just a key player, a, a true key player of this Iowa women's basketball team upcoming. Um, again, folks, um, I only know a few players um, that could probably hustle and, and work as hard as Sydney does. I mean, when she, um, when the when the job, the starting job fell into her lap, um, she she only elevated her play. She she elevated um, offensively, um, defensively. Um, you know, she was she was there um, in terms of hustle and heart, um, unparalleled, not really matched by many. And so, when you look at her, I still will say that offensively she can she can get better, but she likes the corner three. Um, she will shoot the ball if it's in her hands. Uh, let's make no mistake about that. Um, so basically, if the ball finds her, she will shoot it. She's not shy. She's not timid. Um, she plays the physical game. She's from Chicago. So that Chicago style is in her play. And, and when it comes to getting to the free throw line, she's down for going to the, to the strike too. So, yeah, I am um, I'm really excited to, to see how this season Will, will pan out for Sydney and Fulter because um, I'm in the minority. And, and then again, she might not want to do this, what I'm about to say. So, you know, we, we're going to take that into consideration as well. But um, I kind of feel like if she has a good campaign, again, what I'm going to say, I'm in the minority. But if, if Sydney can have a good campaign, right, then I'm here to tell you guys that if she can do just that, then she probably could be a, a borderline NBA WNBA talent, and and so you might say, well, why? You know, you might say RC, um, why why could she be a, a WNBA talent? And I would tell you because of her hustle, um, because of her her heart, her grit, her effort, um, the energy that she plays with, um, and and you don't see it very much. So if she can get that offensive game ratcheted up to par, which um, I will say this, she was, we love Molly Davis. We do, but I do think that she possibly um, was a, a little bit better scorer for us um, in terms of providing the offensive input, uh, just a little bit more than Molly Davis. So, you know, when I, when I, um, when I compared it to, um, obviously, Sydney and Fulter is bigger. Um, she's a, a bigger presence for you um, defensively than than a, than a Molly Davis. But um, I just wish she wasn't a senior um, because this is this will be the last season that we will have um, Sydney and Fulter on the team. So you know we we will try to um, of course make the, make the um make the best of this this senior campaign with her um i think it's just a, a pleasant a true pleasant um gift to have her on our team um last season uh sydney finished with um she finished with an average of 8.5 points um 6.5 rebounds 2.4 assists and she shot 55 percent from the field so man sydney was cooking um, I know there's many nicknames for Sydney of Fulter, um, the big dog in the yard. Um, I've heard I've heard so many names. I've heard, believe it or not, I've heard Psycho see it, um, big dog in the yard. Um, I've called the Sonic Sydney the Hedgehog, um, like a, like a tip toward Sonic because she just she's a constant ball of energy. She never stops going. She never stops moving. Um, I, I've called her. Um, what else? Did I have another one? Um, she's at not, um, I think it was Mrs. Everywhere because she's everywhere. I can't remember all of the nicknames that I, I brought that I've put together and then the ones that I've heard, but she, she probably deserves a little bit of all of them. 
Um, so yeah, shout out to her. Also, Sydney played very well in the championship game. That must be put out. Um, was she perfect? No, nobody is perfect. But in the championship game, folks, she had a stat line of 12 points, four rebounds, three assists, and three steals. So, you know, that that's nice. Um, she can do that against, you know, the, the defending champions. You know, she, she needs to be shouted out. Um, I also must mention she shot 84% from the free throw line, and she also was 41% from three-point range. So you guys cannot tell me that, you know, she is an integral part an integral part of the of the team this coming season. She will be counted upon for veteran leadership, um, you know, for just her, her savvy, just for the way she just plays the game to uh, basically set the tone for others, um, to have that cons- cons- competitive spirit and drive about you, um, especially for some of the young players. Um, they can definitely do to learn a lot from Sydney and Folter. Um, yes, it's Sydney of Folter because some people say, um, I've heard Avalter, um, uh, Avalter is Sydney of Folter. So, yeah, I'm um, not trying to be politically, politically, um, you know, correct with, with the speech, but if you're going to say the name, say it right. But anyway, folks, you know what it is. I was strong. We, I was long. It's always fun to talk some Iowa women's basketball about. Uh, it's always fun to talk some Iowa women's basketball, and we should do this more. Stay tuned. A Hannah video is coming, and we possibly might watch some footage of Addison Deal, and I'll talk about just how, you know, great her game looks. We'll see. But for now, guys, if you're new here, this is RC. We talk Hawkeyes because I love the Hawkeyes and the Bruins and the Aces and the Fever. Okay? So I'm out. See y'all on the next one.